Yo, what's up? We are now at uh, Nebenes Supercharger, and behind me here, I see the Model 3 long range. No, not long range. It's a standard range, plus, it looks like a wrong long range, but it's not. So, it's been a while since I picked it up. I've been quite busy with the ID3, ID4s, but uh, now we are finally going to start some of the tests. So, today we will do the range test. You guys know the drill. Uh, a little bit uh, different from usual is that I will do the high-speed test now because it's uh, Friday. If we do the high-speed test in a uh, yeah, few hours, it would be too crowded and too slow. So, um, yes, this is, by the way, it's not... The door is not properly shut. That's why you see this gap. When it's properly shut, we have no panel gaps. <laughs> and then, yeah, it belongs to Marcus Biel. So, um, he's always looking for more buyers. Uh, this car is for sale. If you want to buy it, you can lease from him. He has a referral code also. Awesome that Marcus, Marcus Biel provides me the car. So the plan now is that we will do that 120 test first. We go here, uh, 39 kilometers to Kolmon and then back again. Or it's called Tongan, whatever, yeah. So um, we, we, yeah, we measure the high speed. And here we have scan my Tesla. It's an app for, well it's, a, it's, a, well, it's an app plus some other stuff. You need some hardware to look at the battery status. So, but we might come back to that later. So now we'll do the final preparation and then start the high speed test. All right, we are on the move now. So fortunately, not too much traffic yet. It's uh, 13, 18, that's the time. Let's check the windsock. Okay, we have, yeah, it seems like a little bit of headwind and side wind. Let's check the other windsock. Yeah, I can see the other windsock is kind of, it's erected. So that means that uh, we have, uh, I wouldn't say very strong wind, but I can see at Mjus now that, uh, yeah, well, yeah, okay, actually, yeah, you still have a second windsock. We have uh, some side wind, slightly fr uh, head wind also. So that's probably why the consumption is 199 watt hour per kilometer right now, or 200. Huh. Well, is that high? That's actually quite good compared to <laughs> many other cars out there. And it's nine degrees Celsius. You can see it here. So now we check the scan my Tesla stats here. This one is not too interesting. I don't know if this affects it or not, but you see that we did fast charge the battery a little bit. So the, the battery is at 43 degrees. Inlet is low. It means that it wants to, um, to cool down the battery. Maybe it's just running it through the radiator without running the compressor. So uh, ideally, yeah, you want to start with, let's say, uh, 20 degrees in the battery pack. But hopefully this run is long enough so that uh, it evens out the consumption and uh, it's something that you can count on. So we'll see that. Oh, it's 10 degrees now. It's 9.5 now over here. Okay. All right. Very good. We are now back at Nebenes. So the consumption was 180 watt per kilometer. I have to correct for distance error. It's probably uh, lower than, well, higher than this. But still really, really good considering this only 10 degrees Celsius outside and it's somewhat windy. But now I have to charge up before we do the second run at uh, 90 kilometers per hour. We are now at Ionity Dahl. So I moved over here because I needed to test the charging. So that will be covered in a separate video. But right now we are at 100%. It's been camping at 100% as usual for Tesla. I guess it's just doing the final uh, like balancing or whatever, I don't know. But uh, I will probably just leave now because it's been uh, st this one has been stuck at 51 kilowatt hour for a pretty long time. It's what the car expects we can get from 100% now down to 0%. So the battery is quite hot, 52 degrees Celsius. Oof, I hope that was, won't affect the consumption too much. So see, it claims, well, it's just here 101%. So I don't know, let's uh, do the final preparation and then off we go. All right, we are on the move, and the first thing we do is check the weight of the car. Let's see how heavy it is. Okay, front axle. Oh, can you see that shit? 820, the whole car. Wow. 1720. That's the lightest Tesla ever. Huh. We 
Oh yeah, let's try the coast. Let's see, speed is picking up. Oh yeah, I think we have a little bit of headwind. I also started coasting a bit late. I was like, ah, should I coast or not? Yeah. Oh, it's picking up speed. Yeah. So by coasting like this, you will. Uh, actually, I'm not sure how much energy you save because by coasting, you don't convert kinetic energy into electricity. And then when you go uphill again, you convert electricity back to kinetic energy. So you, you lose, I mean, you save that, that conversion twice, that conversion loss. So then it boils down to how aerodynamic is the car versus the losses. But I think uh, cruising at around 110 is not going to hurt you. Maybe if the downhill is really long and steep, like grape wine in uh, California, then maybe, yeah, then it will pro you'll probably hit 200 kilometers per hour by the time you go get down the hill, uh, 200 maybe. Or I don't know what you're calling it there. The terminal velocity, the, the point where the drag is so high that you don't pick up speed anymore. <laughs> uh, all right, we are now down to uh, 65%. Consumption is 132, that's quite good. Oh, yeah, not too shabby. But um, yeah, and it's 12 degrees Celsius outside, you can see it there. So, really lovely over here, except for that. It's not green yet, but you can see still some snow on the, on the mountains up there. But, um, yeah, Tesla just called me. Millennium Falcon is done. D-O-N. <laughs> so what happened with Millennium Falcon? Well, it's at the service center for um, upgrading for MCU2 and uh, CCS. <laughs> Man, but it's now five in the afternoon and I have to be there by seven. So, um, yeah. This is going to be a slightly different um, range test because I actually have to drive downtown. You see here we are uh, 88 kilometers away from uh, service center and we will, okay, we're going to be there at, uh, is this correct? Yeah, we're going to be there at uh, six. So there's still, there's a little bit of traffic here, which I want to avoid. So actually, uh, we'll see. I will probably drive back to Dahl and then drive a little bit of loop, maybe go, uh, go Minnesun or, or just, yeah, something, and then try to be at, uh, at the service center, let's say 6.30ish something, so we have a little bit of time uh, margin. So, yeah, man, and then after that one, I just, we have to just, yeah, do it uh, without uh, interfering with this test, but this test needs to be done, and also Millennium Falcon needs to be picked up because I'm going on a long trip with him tomorrow, this weekend, and live streaming it also. <laughs> Can't wait for that one, man. Me and Melinda Falcon uh, spent some quality time. We are now back at Dahl. Let's check now. So um, it's supposed to be 182 kilometers to the roundabout. So the yeah, there's a little bit of over-reporting here, and you just have to know that in, you know, the rule of thumb is that over-reporting distance means the consumption is higher than it shows. Underreported distance means the consumption is lower than it shows. Once you do the math, you realize that's how it works. But let me see. So usually I check it around here, 183. Ah, we have about one, a little over one kilometer of error. Yeah, okay. Uh, I think that's actually so low that I almost wouldn't count it. We are now at Tesla Service Center. This is going to be my pit stop. I haven't peed in almost three hours. Look at that consumption, like a boss. Okay, so we still have time. Yes, plenty of time actually. Hmm, let's see, uh, maybe you guys want to see the battery status. Battery is at 27 degrees Celsius. Uh, we estimate 19.7 kilowatt hour left. All right, let's pick up Millennium Falcon. Here is Millennium Falcon. Well, looks the same on the outside, but the inside has been upgraded. Let's see now. Maybe we should have a little sneak peek. Oh, they, they, um, oh, okay, this, it's been switched to, um, to Norwegian. But supposedly, 
I think they changed that screen also. Oh, I can't wait to check it out. Now, where did they put the, the CCS uh, adapter? Uh, is it? Okay, let's check it out. Must be back here. Mm. Oh, yeah, 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 look at this. Look at this. Oh, ho, 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 ho. my precious. Okay, I have to, I'll just put it here. I have to check it out. Uh, close this one. Yeah, so what the plan now is that I have to move Millennium Falcon over there somewhere. It was okay to park here. Uh, it's not closed. And then I have to finish the test. And then I have to check it out in another video, not today. <laughs> we are now back at Minnesota. We will draw all the way from the city over here. I just draw north to see where I have to turn around again. So, uh, yeah, right now the car estimates will arrive at 2%. But it will probably be more because the car doesn't know that we are driving under the speed limit. But remember, we are doing this test to measure. Uh, we were doing the 90 kilometers per hour test to, uh, to measure some kind of mixed driving. Also city something, but I don't want to bother driving in the city. That's, I have a pretty good reason why I drive a 90 and then why I drive 120. Two different tests. So let's see. Next exit here. We turn around and uh, we have now... 20.9% left and you see here the car estimates 10.6 kilowatt hour let's say at least 10 kilowatt hour we can't count on getting all of that well actually maybe we can uh, yeah I think the the losses they are spread all over the place on it so that um, we should at least be able to get maybe 10.5 kilowatt hour so yeah that should be enough to get home and then we have to drive a little bit back and forth well, it's Circle K that I'm, I've pointed in. Okay, sun is setting in about an hour-ish. Nice long summers. Now we turn back to Oslo. Oh, let me see. Yeah, I see. Okay. So, oh, oh bird! Shit! Shit! No animals were harmed during this uh, video. Okay. We are back home now, and we came here with 1.8%. Yeah, close enough. So, uh, yeah, and this time we drove 384 kilometers with 130 consumption only. <laughs> yes, this is very efficient indeed. And remember, it was around 10 to 12 degrees Celsius outside today. So keep that in mind when you're comparing it with other summer results with higher temperatures. Of course, if we did this uh, this summer, maybe I should try it again in uh, plus 20, plus 25 degrees. And then we see how efficient it becomes then. But okay, anyway, so with today's conditions, at 90 kilometers per hour, I calculated that we have 391 kilometers of range, and then the, uh, and then the available energy is 50.9 kilowatt hour. Last time I tested standard range plus, that was in Sweden, I managed to get this 49.5 kilowatt hour from it. So I'm not sure if this is just a coincidence or if they increase the battery or not hard to tell but then it also means that the high speed test we did earlier today we have 283 kilometers of range so these are really good numbers for uh, this kind of size of battery because it's super efficient however i'm a little bit disappointed that uh, we didn't get uh, the vltp range because it's supposed to be 445 kilometers and at least for Model 3, you can get very close or even beat the VLTP. Uh, but with this car consistently, even, even the previous version, you guys remember, I think that one had 430 or 420 kilometers of range. I don't remember. Oh. Yeah, actually, but um, okay, maybe in summer we will get 400, maybe 410. That's what I'm guessing, but uh, it's almost impossible to get impossible to get 448 kilometers with this car. So it's the VLT. No, it's the yeah, it's the VLTP. Well, it's, it says VLTP estimated. So I guess it's based on EPA or something like that. But um, yeah, but okay, still uh, getting almost 400 kilometers of range in this price range is really good. So if you guys don't know, Norway, this big news today because uh, Tesla recently lowered the price on the standard range plus by 50,000 nook. Yeah, Marcus is like crying in the corner now. Ah, shit. Yeah, because he's, this belongs to Marcus. He paid the full price for it. <laughs> but um, it also means that um, 
this car suddenly becomes really affordable and becomes really um, competitive compared to other cars because think about this we have to compare the, the Model 3 Standard Range Plus to Model uh, no, ID3 and what else Kona, e Niro, you know, Leaf those cars also cost around 300, uh, 350 to 400k nook but I'm gonna ask you which car has which of those cars can tow 1000 kilo or more none except for a model 3 and then which car well can charge at 160 kilowatt well okay maybe okay and then well okay and let me put it this way model 3 can tow 1000 kilo it can have ooh, i don't remember 65 or 75 kilo uh, roof weight you can put stuff on the roof it has pretty nice top speed, pretty nice acceleration. I have to test that still. Pretty good space. It has motorized lift gate. Uh, what else? Supercharger network. Charges pretty fast, super efficient. The only problem with Model 3 is that it's quite noisy. Uh, it has superb uh, sound system, superb infotainment really nice interior just like the more expensive ones like i pointed out so many times before so you can't really find any other car in this price range that ticks the right boxes for norwegians so norwegians you can spec this model 3 with anhanger kopplung well, hanger till hanger hanger faster and um, yeah if you spec it uh, that one that's the one you need and then you don't need the white interior whatever the lowest price then is around 375k nook try to find other cars in that price range in norway <laughs> that can match the spec i just mentioned you won't find it it's a freaking bargain really and i haven't really tested all of it yet so uh yeah if you are interested in buying a standard range plus and you want to buy it from tesla then uh, consider using a Marcus bills referral link Ding! yeah so I think that's going to be it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.